Hello, Bagby Barracudas. We are going to make a little art project together. So in your art kit, you should have several things. One is a letter with a picture of some of the samples of what we're going to do. You should have a big piece of newsprint, and I'll show you what to do with that. You should have a fork. You should have a set of paints. You should have some different colors of paper, and you might have different colors than I do, but you're gonna have a selection of different colored, bright colored paper, and then you're also gonna have a piece of black and maybe a scrap or some different pieces of white, white and black paper. You will also have a glue stick, which we will use at the end, and you will have a pair of scissors. These are all the things that you need in order to do our little fork painting of different animals. And I'm gonna show you some examples, and then I will do a couple for you. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're going to set aside your supplies and open up your newsprint paper. And this is to, yours should be clean, but this is to protect your desk and when you're done, if you get paint anywhere on it or anything spills, all you have to do is pick it all up, crumble it up, and throw it away. So this should keep your desk or your table clean for you. So here's an example of some animals we could make with fork painting, and I'll show you what that means. But these are different animals that have lots of texture in their feathers or their fur or their different parts of their body. So. Here is an example of a little chick. So we have painted the body and we've glued on eyes and a beak and the feet. And notice we've chosen a bright blue color against a yellow, um, a bright blue color behind the yellow paint. Here is an example of a lion and he has a big hairy fuzzy mane that we've painted with the fork. You see this, how this has the tines like this and we've painted, used the fork as our paintbrush. And we've used a little bit of white paper and black to make his eyes and a triangle and then we used a pen to make his nose. Here's a fun one. This guy is a panda and he has a nice bright contrasting color. What I mean by contrasting is a color that's very different than the paint we're using. So we have a white fur face and he's got black ears. We use the fork to do his black ears like this. All right. And he has the black circle around his eyes and then he has the white and he's got another black little circle on the inside. And he's got a nose and a mouth. And we've cut these out of paper. Here's a cute little animal. This guy's a hedgehog. And notice we've had a green paper and we've had a different color paint. And he has kind of a triangle shaped face and a circle for his nose and a little sliver for his mouth and two circles for his feet. But we've used a fork to make his spikes. He's a hedgehog, so he's got like spiky fur that goes around like this, All right? And last but not least, we have a little puffer fish. And puffer fish are spiky, right? So we've got some yellow for the top half of his body, and we've got some white for the bottom half, and we've got a black circle with a bigger white circle and the same for the eyes. We have a little half circle of black on top of a circle of a little oval of white. Okay, now that we've seen some examples of animal paintings, I have one more place for us to get ideas of what kind of animals and what kind of textures their fur or their feathers make. So we have a book called Wombat Stew and it is by Marsha K. Vaughn and Pamela Lofts. And we got a wombat here in a bucket. And we got a, this animal here is called an echidna. 
Let's take a look. Wombat Stew. One day on the banks of a billabong, a very clever dingo caught a wombat. Oh, oh there's a pair of eyes there, do you see? And decided to make wombat stew. Wombat stew, gooey, brewy, yummy, chewy, wombat stew. Look at, he's dancing around with his pot. Look at the wombat. See, he's got a furry, furry head. He's got a big old nose. He doesn't look very happy, that does he? Platypus came ambling up the bank. Good day, dingo, he said, snapping his bill. What is all the water for? I'm brewing up a gooey, chewy stew with a fat wombat, replied Dingo with a toothy grin. Look at his big teeth. If you ask me, said Platypus, the best thing for a gooey stew is mud. Big blops of billabong mud. Blops of mud, Dingo laughed. What a good idea. Righto, in they go. So Platypus scooped up big blops of mud with his tail and tipped them into the billy can. Here's his billy can. Look at his surprise face. And look at the funny hat he's got on. Around the bubbling billy, Dingo danced and sang, Wombat stew, wombat stew, gooey, brewy, yummy, chewy, wombat stew. <gasps> Check out this guy. Waltzing out from the shade of the iron barks came Emu. She arched her graceful neck over the brew Oh ho, Dingo, she fluttered. What have we here? Gooey, chewy, wombat stew, boasted Dingo. If only it were a bit more chewy, she sighed. But don't worry, a few feathers will set it right. Feathers, Dingo smiled. That would be chewy. Righto, in they go. So into the gooey brew, Emo dro Emu dropped her finest feathers. Look at her fun hair on her feathers on top of her head and her long eyelashes. Around and around the bubbling billy, Dingo danced and sang. Wombat stew, wombat stew, crunchy munchy for my lunchy. Wombat stew. They all look a little worried, don't they? Old Blue Tongue the lizard came sliding off his sun-soaked rock. Silly dingo, he hissed. There are no flies in this stew. Can't be wombat stew without crunchy flies in it. And he stuck out his bright blue tongue. There's a lot to be said for flies, agreed Dingo, rubbing his paws together. Righto, in they go. So Lizard snapped 100 flies from the air with his long tongue and flipped them into the gooey, chewy stew. Look at his winky eye. Around and around and around the bubbling billy, Dingo danced and sang, Wombat stew, wombat stew, crunchy munchy for my lunchy, wombat stew. They all have kind of funny expressions, kind of laughing at him a little bit. Up through the d red dust popped Echidna. This is Echidna right here. Look at his cool spiky fur. Spines, he has spines. Oh, my son Ronan has corrected me that he has spines. Wait a bit, not so fast, he bristled, shaking the red dust from his quills. Oh, not spines, but quills. 
Now, I've been listening to all this advice and take it from me, for a munchy stew, you need slugs and bugs and creepy crawlies. Look at him, he's poking him in the belly. This is what you need. Dingo wagged his tail. Why, I should have thought of that. Righto, in they go. So, Echidna duck, dug up all sorts of creepy crawlies and dropped them into the gooey, chewy, crunchy stew. Look at all these funny guys with their faces going, ah, into the stew. The very clean, clever dingo stirred and stirred all while singing, wombat stew, wombat stew, hot and spicy, oh, so nicey, wombat stew. Just then, the sleepy-eyed koala climbed down the scribbly gum tree. Look here, he yawned. Any bush cook knows you can't make a spicy stew without gum nuts. Leave it to koala to think of gum nuts. Dingo laughed and licked his whiskers. Rightio, in they go. Into the gooey, chewy, crunchy, munchy stew. Koala shook lots of lots and lots of gum nuts. Aha! cried Dingo. Now my stew is missing only one thing. What's that? asked the animals. That fat wombat. Wait! Stop! Hang on, Dingo! You can't put that wombat into the stew yet. Look at them all going, no, don't do it. Why not? You haven't tasted it. Rightio, I'll taste it. And that very clever dingo bent over the billy and took a great big slurp of the stew. Oh, I'm poisoned, he howled. You've all tricked me. Look at his big long tongue hanging out. And he dashed away deep into the bush, never to sing again. Wombat stew, wombat stew, gooey, brewy, yummy, chewy, wombat stew. And then there you have the wombats doing, doing his happy dance. The end. Okay, barracudas. Let's go ahead and make an art project, make a painting. So we've had some, seen some examples of paintings that were done in the past by Bagby students, and we read a book with some different animals. So let's start by making, I'm gonna make two animals with you here. Before we begin painting, let's make sure that you have your newsprint paper laid out on your table to keep everything clean. And if we get paint anywhere, we get some drips, it's no big deal, we can just let it fall on the paper and when we're finished, we're gonna crumple up the paper and throw it away. And clean up is nice and easy. You will need to choose a piece of construction paper and any bright color that will be kind of a different, a contrast that doesn't match the color you're gonna paint with. So we're gonna paint a panda, so I'm gonna use white on this dark purple, for example. And you're gonna want some other colors to make the nose and the eyes. So I have some black and white paper here. You also have some paper towels and a fork, and you have your paint pots. Uh, the paper towels are for cleaning off your fork if you decide to change colors in your paint or if things get too messy. So you might need, I found it a little bit difficult to take the lids off these paints. So you might need help from an adult to take open the lids. We're gonna open up the lids of our paint here and Let's start by making, we're gonna try and make a panda just like this guy. So, we're gonna use white paint and give it a little tap so it's not too drippy. I'm gonna make a nice circle. And I found that it's almost easier to move the paper And we're using the pattern of the fork. Oh, look at that big drip I got. See, 
accidents happen sometimes when we do art. We just go over that drip and spread it around. We're using the pattern of the fork to make a pattern that will look like the animal's fur. There we go some more. In there. So notice I'm not going like this, scraping back and forth, or like this. We're just making the print of the fork. And do you know what these are called right here? The little individual bits on a fork? It's called a tine. Not, sounds like time on a clock, but it's a tine with the letter N. Let's fill in the rest of our white. Kind of keep going in a circle, making the direction of my panda bear's fur. My paint pot is running low on paint. Yours won't be though because you have plenty of paint in your pot because yours is brand new. Okay. If you need time to finish, you can pause and finish your panda bear shape. But I'm gonna keep going. Okay, there we have his fur. I'm going to clean off my fork. I'm going to use a little bit of black to make his ears. I'm going to tap, tap, tap so I don't have too much paint. And let's give him two ears right here. Go one, two, there we go. Big glob right there. Spread it out. Maybe a couple more. Okay. There, I'm gonna go ahead and put my paintbrush back there. And then we're going to make some eyes for him. And in your set, art set, you're going to have a glue stick. We are going to go ahead and cut the eyes now, but my paint is still wet. So what we're gonna do is cut the eyes and get ready to glue them down. And you're gonna to have to wait a little bit to let the paint dry. And then you can glue them on once your paint is dry. But let's make our eyes. Instead of having to cut two eyes separately, I'm gonna fold my paper in half like this. So I have Paper cut in half like this, and I'm gonna cut two. I cut one big oval, but because I have two layers of paint of paper, I'm gonna get two circles like that. So when the paint is dry, we're gonna glue them down like this. Alright, so he has big back circles around his eyes. I'm gonna do the same thing with my white paper a little piece here. I'm gonna make an oval for his eyes. Because I had it folded over in two pieces, I have two eyes. And then take another little piece of black paper and make a tiny little pupil. So we only need a little piece. So I'm gonna fold it over again. And this is a good opportunity to practice our cutting skills. We got two pupils. And then he's going to need a nose for sure. How about a circle for a nose? And then I think he needs a mouth. So 
we're going to cut a smiling shape. So now he looks like a smiling bear, but a bear normally has this part on their nose that's connected. So let's see if we can make him a little piece there. There we go. So what I'd like you to do is let your paint dry. And when the paint is dry, if your eyes are not sticking to your paint, we're going to use our glue sticks and pick up the pieces one at a time and put glue on the bottom. And then put, oh, I dropped my little black eye. Oh, my eye got stuck, there we go. Put some glue right there and glue down your parts. And there you have our little panda. Okay, let's try and make one more animal painting. What if we tried to make this guy, the echidna from our story? So he's got spines on his back and he's got big black claws. And he's got a long nose. Let's see if we can make him. So I have my picked color of paper. I'm gonna go with yellow here, but you can use another light color that you have. And let's make, he's brown and black, but we don't have that. So I'm gonna be imaginative and we're gonna make him green. I'm gonna use green to make my echidna, to make his spines at least. Okay, so I'm gonna get my fork and he has kind of a round shaped body. So let's go like this. One, two, three, four, five. Let's do some more. One, two, three. And there was a lot of paint on that section, so I'm gonna see if I can get some of that paint and make it go around some more. Let's do the next layer. Tap, tap, tap. So again, we're going up and down to make a pattern like his spines. Oh, the word is quills. Got his quills here. And then I'm going to see, he has big black claws. Can you see the claws that he's got right there? Big claws. So let's get some black. Tap, tap, tap. Let's give him some black feet. black claws. And then I'm going to wipe off my fork. And I think that's all the painting we need to do for him. So now let's see if we can make his big pointy nose right here. I'm going to pick some, maybe some orange paper, orange paper here. And let's give him a big long pointy nose. Glue won't stick to the wet paint, but it will stick to the part that's not covered. So there's his big nose. And then he needs some eyes. And I think we're, we're only looking at one side of his body, so we only need to do one eye here. And his eyes are kind of shaped like people eyes, not round, so it's gonna go. Too big. Put his eye down this way. There we go. 
there is my echidna. What do you think? I hope you have fun making some fork painting animals and you have a couple pieces of paper and lots of paint. So if you want to do more than one, you absolutely can. You should have plenty of paper to do that. Um, until next time, thank you, Bagby Barracudas.